watching the number one podcast in the whole entire wrestling community, and I'm one of your hosts, Juanzo. And I'm your other host, Jean Paul Leck. Together we are Rob Brig, and welcome, family. It is Friday night. It's time to talk about SmackDown, and it's the first show that we're going to be actually seeing the rosters the way that they're supposed to be moving forward. So we're going to be talking about all of that, the outcome of everything that happened also on Crown Jewel, and how they were going to manage the titles, yeah, the Women's Championship, Raw, and SmackDown, how Becky Lynch and Charlotte were going to address these championships. We're going to be talking about everything. But the poll, one more time, like you said, outside of Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar, this show legit sucks. Yeah, and I mean, you know, we, they started the show with, you know, the stuff from Roman Reigns. And obviously, you know, after that, it's like, okay, the show was downhill from there. But before we get into it, family, you know, obviously everything Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns, if you're not sure what happened, go check out our review yesterday. You know, we did double duty, you know, so go check out both videos. Crown Jewel, you know, check that out. We give all of our thoughts there. You know, overall, great pay-per-view, you know, a couple of missteps here and there. And obviously, NXT UK, check out that as well. You know, so, you know, great stuff there. But, you know, what what did you think of, of the opening of SmackDown? I mean, uh, I, I, the opening was like pretty solid. They said also that the only thing that was too long for me, but don't forget, like you said, like the NXT UK family, uh, you know, we didn't, Brock Lesnar was going to be on SmackDown. So that was like something that we haven't seen in like forever. Brock Lesnar fighting on pay-per-view and then the next show also being there. The thing was like he needed one more appearance to fulfill contract obligations for this year. That's maybe why they did it. You know, Roman Reigns comes out. He's number one. He's the best out of the best. He says that, like, he's beating everybody. John Cena, Daniel Bryan, Kevin Owens, all of them. Cesaro, Finn Balor, every single one of these guys. And now Brock Lesnar, he's matched all of them. And then he calls him out. He says, he here. You know, the one thing also he says is, like, when you throw the title, do you throw it for me or for Brock Lesnar? And, you know, so you see still, like, they still kind of play with that idea. Like, they want to keep that seed in our heads. That, like, at some point, he might turn to Roman Reigns. And all of that calls out Brock Lesnar. This took forever, remember? They went and even, like, to commercial break for that. And then they came back. And there's, he still waits for Brock Lesnar. He ends up finally coming back. He shows up. And he just cleans house like the good old style of Brock Lesnar. And I did I, I did like this. I did like this. I thought they were going to have a match. But I was like, yeah, maybe Brock Lesnar will not fight back-to-back nights. But it was really good. Yeah, you know, there's, this, like, I agree with what you said. This segment was good, but it was too long, you know, to all this was said and done. And then with what we saw, you know, with Adam Pierce and everything, I believe it was. Oh, oh no, that that was after, you know, then they, that was after not, that, to yes. get, not to get ahead of myself. But it was after a match, you know, after the first match that we saw later on with Drew, you know, it was. So this almost took us to like 830. You know, this yeah, was like at yeah. least a half an hour, you know, but I mean, it, everything Roman said was badass. I liked it, you know, antagonize him. You know, like you said, it, it's still hinting what's. Paul Heyman, what's his, you know, end game? Who's he aligned with? Lesnar comes out, he looks dominant. Roman and the Usos and all them retreat. And, you know, he's pissed and, you know, he's throwing cameras and everything. He's going like, you know, berserk. And, you know, Adam Pierce and everything's like, well, you need to calm down. He's like, Roman, you can't hijack a show. Lesnar, you can't be bullshit like this. You know, this needs to stop. And, you know, you, you know, you, you're not just endangering everybody, you know, like us and, you know, the camera crew and everything, but you're endangering the WWE universe. And he's like, yes. you're suspended indefinitely. So Lesnar's like, what? You want to repeat that motherfucker? And he's like, oh, you're suspended. Uh, you know, F5, all this stuff, you know, takes him out and everything. And, you know, so Adam Pierce is done. And this is kind of two things here. Lesnar is gone. Like you said, he did his last date. So now he's going to be not until next year. What's next year? January. January's Royal Rumble. Boom. You know, we said it already. That's going to be, you know, maybe when you do the second big match in their trilogy, if this is indeed going to lead to WrestleMania. But not to get too ahead of ourselves, but that's where this is probably going. And it's also good because now Adam Pierce's, you know, storyline taken out. And now we see Sonya Deville really developing that heel and now she's going to be the heel where Adam Pierce was more kind of the baby face. He tried to keep things, you know, in line and everything. Now Sonya Deville is going to be the heel and she's going to be the one in charge. So it's interesting to see, you know, how that plays out as well. But I, I like this segment maybe just a little too long in certain parts. If it wouldn't go to commercial break, then maybe I would have liked it even more because he yeah. called him out and then he took forever to come out. So maybe that's what like the problem was. One thing also like the crew, everybody in the WWE, you know, company, so to say, they all came back great, and then no, 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 no jack in the plane, no, like, you know, no hell hostage, none of that, everybody was just on time, it was just, like, two years ago, it was just a fluke, I guess, but like you said, 
at least we get to see Brock Lesnar. Then he fulfilled his contract obligations for this year, so he will come back by the Royal Rumble. He mentioned Sonny Deville being healed. The feud with Naomi is still, you know, right there. Like, Naomi's like, hey, I need to talk to you. Sonny Deville is like, no, you know what? After all of this, because they show everybody, the whole roster, like, also running against Brock Lesnar, confusion, chaos, all of those elements right there. So he's like, I don't want to see you. Whatever, get the hell out of here. So that was good. Then Drew McIntyre comes out, like, so I need a match. You know, I need to be introduced to, like, this SmackDown audience. He fought Sami Zayn. Pretty decent, you know, for what, five minutes, six minutes that they gave us, but in the end, Claymore kick, one, two, three, and Drew McIntyre, like, is on SmackDown. Outside of Roman, this could be, and Brock Lesnar, this could be the next potential feud, and at some point, Drew and Roman will be headlining a pay-per-view. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, I think if anybody is going to, you know, beat Roman, it should be Drew. I mean, I think, you know, maybe Drew, you know, you got to... I think if he would cut his own promos and be badass and not be so like baby face that he's, you know, the script that he's given, he would be more tolerable. But for a while there, we're like, oh, you know, it's too much Drew. But I think eventually, you know, that he he can get to that point again where we want to see him beat Roman because, I mean, do we really want to see The Rock beat him? No. Oh, yeah, do, exactly. Do we really want to see Brock Lesnar beat him? No, not really. Like I said, I'd rather see Lesnar go to Raw. But, I mean, th this was a good win for Drew McIntyre. I think you need to do this. You know, put him on TV. Get him a win here because he's one of your top guys. And Sami Zayn, they know he's going to be El Generico sooner rather than later. So, they're like, hey, whatever. You do know, the favors. Just, yeah. yeah, exactly. You just be here. Like, just job. It will be fine. You know, there's going to be a lot of changes also, like, on the on some of the people in the roster of SmackDown. So, we're going to be talking about Hit Row. Like I said, they're going to make their debut. And they already completely switched the order of everybody because... Because now Top Dollar is going to be the leader of the of the whole group instead of like Isaiah or Scott. And like you said, for the main reason is that Vince loves Top Dollar. He was actually part of like that show, The Hidden Treasures, all of that. And now Isaiah or Scott, because he was a Triple H guy, then he is not going to be the main guy anymore, which I hate because Isaiah or Scott is the one that like actually out of the four, he's a, for me the best guy. And, you know, we're going to see Adonis, we're going to see FIBA, but I don't know. I don't know how well this change can actually work for them, but we're going to hear from them in a little bit. But tell me, like, do you like this or is this, like, really Vince? They don't even, yeah, they I mean, I'll, already well, changing I'll, everything. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll save it for, like, when we get to their segment. You know, yes, exactly. We'll yeah, so, here. like, you know, like we, we go to, like, this part that is really low from the show is, like, the segment that I really didn't care for, and that's the... Oh, you know, it gets uh, worse. Believe me, it gets worse. Yeah, exactly. Like, the crowning of, like, Isaiah... Uh, not Isaiah, like, Isaiah. Xavier <laughs> Woods. Yeah, exactly. Like, like the, the crowning of Xavier Woods as the king of the ring. You know, Kofi Kingston, of course, he's just pretty much been overly cringy, overly elevating the figure of Xavier Woods. Oh, my God, he's great. He's awesome. Like, he deserves this more didn't than it, anybody else. He almost come off I, at, when I was listening to this, the way he was so over the top, like you said, I mean, it's them being goofy, but in a way, I'm like, this is almost coming off heel. I'm like, I almost wish as this was going on, I'm like, you know, if they pull out a thing where they turn heel, it's like, I'm the king. And now you people, you know, will finally have to like if, if Xavier Woods would have turned heel right here. That would have been good because the fans were so behind him. Woods, we want you to win. Oh, my God. You know, screw Finn Balor. He's a piece of shit. Oh, my God. We want Xavier Woods to win. Everybody wanted Woods to win. If he would have won and turned heel here, that would have been a big middle finger to all the fans. I think that would have been cool. But, you know, they didn't really do that. Like I said, they were just over the top, fringy. And I, I didn't like this. Now, who cares about this? You know what? Like I said, if, if the King of the Ring will actually mean something, I would be like, oh, you know, it really sucks. It doesn't mean absolutely anything. That crown, that scepter, whatever, doesn't mean mm -hmm. absolutely anything. And we're fine with this because we I'd don't really care. King Booker. Yeah, I, yeah probably that was the one, like, the last King of the Ring that actually meant semi-decent. That was going to start to go down. When I King Booker, I, I, I mean, I mean uh, well, Booker was legit. Not to go too off topic, but I mean, he like Charmel, you know. So I mean, like he had the Queen, you know, and then he won the WWE or the World Heavyweight then, Championship. Yeah, you know, did, at yeah. least it's like okay, you know, badass. Like at that's least, what you know, I'm saying. Like at something. least that was like the one that like won something. Hey, Xavier won Woods the other is gonna, thing. Xavier Woods. Spoiler alert! Again, I'm gonna play Paul Heyman. He's gonna be right like King Corbin. He's gonna go an entire year. I'm the king. I'm the king. But that's it. No belt, nothing ever is gonna nothing, come out, out of that exactly you're right so like you now let's go to like the big doubt here the big question mark that a lot of people have is like we have two girls that have like opposite championships they're on two different shows so we want to know how are they going to do this and we ask wwe we beg wwe 
don't just swap the times they just like we said like that was the most stupid thing when we saw the strip profits and they knew they last year and they're gonna do it title exchange there <laughs> so there you go for all, every single one of us that asked for a little bit of creativity as a little bit of like you know initiative no no we're not gonna do that so we're just gonna give it in the most cringy way we're gonna hear that as the main in the main event zion lee this is gonna be baby baseball no more like Remember, uh, Mei Yim, Nian Sha, none of that. Forget about all of that. Just going to be baby face. That, that, I mean, that was a whole Triple H. That was a thing that, like, Triple H and some, or somebody on his team had a brainstorm. Hey, let's try this thing. And as soon as Vince got, what? If, you know, this is, no. Not. Yeah, yeah. That, but that's I mean, I mean hey, you know what? I'm going to be honest. At this point, that, that thing was beyond saving. So just, yeah, debut her as a baby face. Oh, she's tough. You know, okay. You know, she can knock people out. You know, she's. She had brutal kicks, you know, just debut as who she is. Don't, you know, be this weird kind of gimmicky shit. No, exactly. So, like, yeah, that's, that's what, like, they're going to, like, just also that they change Artsy Blacker. She's going to be a heel. Also, Apollo and Aziz, they're going to be a tag team now, Monday Night Raw. So, like, a lot of changes. So, after that, we got to see Mansoor and also Mustafa Ali. Another match that, like you said, important for what it was Crown Jewel. Is the first like two Muslims in one match, but in the end, like oh, the rematch for this, and in the end, Mansoor wins one more time. So if you're Mustafa Ali, also like AEW bound, you know, like, like he doesn't have a chance in the WWE. Every single opportunity, he has not worked for the guy. Leader of you know group that isn't that didn't help out. They put him in a tag team with Mansoor that didn't help out. So like there's no and, and I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I mean. He might be one of those guys. I don't know what he, I know he's a big family guy, you know, not like, you know, Peter Griffin, but you know, he, he <laughs> loves his kids and his wife and, you know, care, and he, he's big with, with his family. And, you know, with all this, maybe he was getting paid good money. I'm sure Mustafa Ali's smart. You know, I, I know he was a police officer and all this stuff before. Maybe I wouldn't be surprised if after this, maybe he goes, you know what? I'm done with wrestling. Yeah. Maybe, you know, like, maybe like wrestling was just so bullshit i mean I, if he would go to aew i think he would just get lost in the shuffle i'd rather see go to like a ring of honor or mlw where then you can be okay you know you can play around with you know some you know guys use me that, better you yeah, know exactly. give me more at least protagonism that's something that like uh, they mm -hmm. don't do that with him but i agree so like i mean uh, like, if he saved his check at least he did something good for him we got to hear from like rich holland another one that like you said triple h maybe like he had a lot of hope in nxt oh, no you're in smackdown now is he gonna do something time will tell but i don't I, know I, like I, I think ridge, all these experiments you I, know? I think ridge i think i think zaya lee is pretty much doomed I think Rich Holland will be all right because he's a big guy. He can talk, you know, muscular. So Vince is probably loving it. And, you know, Aaliyah, you know, the the promo that they gave her here, you know, oh, I'm going to give him a makeover or whatever. I mean, bougie, awful, right? The awful, most bougie. Yeah. I mean, awful, you know, just the script that they gave her. But, you know, she's attractive. So, you know, she has a chance. And, and you know, these guys, done, <laughs> no, done. Done. No, no, they Brock Lesnar already like beat him up both. Yeah, yeah, yeah they just done, went done. from low mid card on Raw to low mid card on SmackDown. It, yeah, it, yeah, they're, they're like hit low, not hit yeah. row, hit low. And then we got and, and how and it doesn't that suck because how over was Angel Garza on NXT? Oh yeah, no, remember like he was like a big thing where you and me were really big fans of like uh, Angel Garza, the Wing Clipper, all of those stuff like good matches, like everything, even like the gimmick. You remember when he took the pants off and all of that, really good stuff. But in the end, you know, man, shame is also like all of them lost in the shuffle. You wanted to talk about Hit Bro, they came out like that already. See. Like top down is gonna be the leader, like I mentioned once again, and they fought like some enhancement talent, Isaiah Sir Scott, and also Adonis are gonna be like a tag team. Eh, do, do I care about this? No, they're already and, jumping. And this, this, this is this is what I want to say. You know, I maybe your opinion will change when you hear my perspective on it. Okay, you make Top Dollar the, the guy who he does most of the talking. Now they came out, they cut the same promo that they cut on NXT, pretty much introducing themselves, why they are who they are. And but like Top Dollar did more of the talking here, and he might be the mouthpiece. But to me, that's like MVP. Just because MVP does the talking a lot, who was the main guy? He didn't go, oh, MVP's badass. No, it was Lashley. Yeah, got the win here in this match. It wasn't, you know, top dollar. He didn't score the pin. It was Isaiah Swerve Scott. He still scored the pin. He's still the guy who come out and said, I won all the belts. 
you know, he it, they didn't forget his title reign. They didn't say, oh, don't mention your NXT title reigns. No, he said, I won the belts. I was legit. So, you know, I think he's still going to be the main guy, the main wrestler, you know, superstar of the team. But Top Doll is going to do the talking because, you know, that's probably his strong suit. You know, when, yeah, you know, you have, you, have, right. Adon you right. have Adonis and Swerve Scott are the two better wrestlers. And obviously, B-Fab is the female. They're going to probably try to mix her in, you know, into the women's in the division. Women's division that's where she's going. Exactly. I agree with if they do it in that perspective if they if you put the idea if you try to sell me the idea the way you said it is a little bit but like for me again we'll see because like i said a lot of things are already do the, the one thing I, I, I don't care for like the the rapping i mean i do like the, the group and their gimmick but like the promos all of them can talk but the little rhyming and like the uh, you know the word play they do maybe tone that down a little bit you know when you you know maybe try to be more serious but you know that they can all talk so to me almost any of them could really be the leader like they no, can yeah. Talk, they no, can all yeah. talk. To me, that they don't even need the leader. Like they're all yeah. like, in the same level, so it's just the, the four guys that they know their skill and they can do that. But we'll see what happens. But like you said, better idea, better outtake when it comes mm -hmm. to your idea. I like that. So uh, let's go to something that we've seen so many times throughout 2021. That like you know, it takes away the smile. Th that, like, this is have. this is the point of the show when you go. You know what? Like I'm just gonna either watch Rampage or just like watch nothing. Exactly. No, and, and uh, fall in sleep. That's what actually is like. What I, this part of like happy Corbin against Shinsuke Nakamura like championship contenders match they still do that stupidity that's fine because they went at it and Nakamura like as a champion is absolute joke the guy we love him like he's good but in the end you know every time that they mm -hmm. want to start now you said him, a guy who should go to AEW now that to me that should be Nakamura yeah have him go there he can have a couple matches against these guys you know him versus Danielson should be legit. Him versus Omega. You know Adam Cole. You know a couple guys. You know obviously they have the partnership with New Japan if he wants to do that and then retire be legit because you know there's no way you know just this feud with Corbin still continues. Happy Corbin is so bad. Riddick Moss is just so cringy. You have Boogs playing the guitar. You know trying to cause a distraction two three times in this match. You know Nakamura gets distracted. He you know eats what the the uh, whatever the, the end of days. yeah the end of days and as soon as corbin pinned him i'm like you know what corbin's gonna beat him for the belt yeah and then nakamura's gonna look like it imagine that guy be that guy like legit beat me for a belt i'd probably go in the locker room and like kick his ass for a shoot i'd be like no like there's no way i can live with that embarrassment and, no, and that's what i mean because you know, he's such a like... loser he's he's such a loser of a gimmick you know to mean that it doesn't elevate corbin it, you know because corbin's such he's just w where he's at he, he can't go up anymore in this awful gimmick yes you know yeah. having him win just buries nakamura so. hey, hey no it is and a lot of people already saying what you just man it's like because of this he's going to become the champ so he's going to lose that championship to like happy corbin it really sucks and nakamura like you said once the contract is over go to aw have better matches and then like you said go against or Akasuka just become a, a become a full-time surfer and just retire and just and, and yeah because ass. again like ever since you went up to that main roster it's been just a roller coaster with more lows than highs you know more hit, like, hey, if, hit if, lows. If, if, if it was still triple h's run nxt and like i would be like just do what finn balor did come back to nxt be legit but eh, I, don't, I don't see him fitting into 2.0 they'd put him with icky man and uh oh yeah and, 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 and cheetah it will be like a three no 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 and, you know and he shows up in the end when he spin and stuff like that no thank you we don't want to see that so let's go one more time to say like charlotte flair cut a promo she says that like she's gonna be maybe charlotte two two belts also like becky she wants both belts because she deserves it the queen all of that we're gonna see finally who how are they gonna do this we already mentioned they're gonna do this one so uh, in the most cringy way like i don't understand even why they don't even try to make it like at least less you know predictable less announce they, they even announce it with like thinking that we don't we don't get it or like we just not, not gonna react to it so like becky kind of like throws the title alone so like charlotte throws the title like you know sonya is like not, not really handling the situation that well for me and then you just see them like exchanging belts and then they say hey survivor series will be the next encounter for us so we're gonna see this probably one more time but thankfully before she could say that sasha bangs in the rub she starts attacking charlotte so at least we see that like the ball is going to try to be in the middle of this and i don't know how you felt but like at least the inclusion of sasha banks is just a little better but it's still the most uncreative way lazy you know not thoughtful it's just hey let's give the crowd like whatever we can to make to make ourselves look like so boring that's how this I is this is the only thing i'll say is 
if Sasha came back as a baby face, you know, then I'd be okay. You know, if, if everything was lit, but Sasha came back as a heel because Sasha is more over as a heel. That's what we want to see. And now we come out here and you go, okay, so she, you know, Becky grabbed the ropes, you know, to pin Sasha. So, you know, Becky, our, our, uh, Sasha, yeah, got sure, cheated, sure. she, got, she got cheated out of a win. So she should be pissed. So she comes out. So she has a reason to come out. So, okay, that's fine. But then she gets in Charlotte's face because obviously both of them are on SmackDown. Becky's now on Raw. Becky's like, well, you know what? I have my Raw belt. I'll let you two, you know, dopes, you know, settle this. And she leaves. So then, you know, those two go at it. And to me, I mean, Sasha's the top. T who's who's higher in the women's power rankings than you would say Charlotte, you know, than Sasha? Nobody. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's no Bianca. She's on Raw. You know, Liv Morgan, Carmella, you know, I don't even know if they're on this brand. You know, Shayna, no, Shayna lost the Queen of the, you know, Queen's Crown or whatever that bullshit thing was called. Yes. So I wouldn't say yeah. Shayna. I mean, you know, she's kind of up there, but I mean, Sasha to me is great. And, you know, if that's going to be the feud, you know, leading into, you know, whether they have it at Survivor Series or whenever. I mean, this is good. Now, have we seen it a million times? Yes, yeah. we have. And is that the problem when I said that you should just unify the belts and it should just be one woman's division? Because then you could just do Becky and Charlotte. And then you could decide who the champion is. Because then you could have Rhea Ripley in the mix. You could have Shayna. You could have Piper Niven. Selena Vega, Shotzi, you could you have, have more options, you could have yeah. all of them, you know, Natalia, Tamina, even Nia Jackson or Hole, you know, you could have all of them in here and, you know, they could all be, you know, vying for this championship of Bailey when she returns instead of like, you know, having a division that is, you know, split in half with like four people in each division and it's just the same matchups over and over. And, and then that's the big issue. In the same matchups, like you said, no Liv Morgan, no, like also, we, well, Liv Morgan is on Raw now, but like at least it's some, uh, goodbye, no Tony Storm. And not, none of like the girls that maybe they should be. Maybe Zion Lee will have a little bit of an opportunity. We'll see, but in the end, like you said, it, the same matchups are what the thing that is really boring. We want to see different things. We want to see different women being pushed. This is not the case. So this is what how we end the show. You know, the balls and Charlotte staring. So we're gonna have this classic. Remember this rivalry 2016, 2017. They fought over the road women's championship but like so many times. They exchanged titles so many times. But it's just gonna be, you know. What well, the same of the same. So pretty much that family that sums it up for SmackDown. Thank you so very much for being with us. You know, outside of Roman and Brock Lesnar, the show absolutely sucks. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and give the video a like. So more people are, you know, exposed to the original road break. And remember, tomorrow, double feature one more time. Jump all the egg, AW Dynamite, everything that happens on this show, Kenny Omega, and more hype for full gear. And with me, we're going to be talking about Bound for Glory. What is going to be Christian, Joseph Alexander, the return of a lot of figures. Melina will be back. Maybe Braun Strowman. A lot of people say that he's already in Las Titan. Vegas. Dude, stick Titan. around. Yeah, the Titan. Titan. The Titan is going to be. There you go. So be with them. Jean Paul first, then me, you know, and enjoy the show. So, Paul, where else can they find you? And then, guys, you know, to make sure you don't miss out, you know, any of when we do these double features or any of our updates, follow us on all of our social media, Rope Break on Facebook, DOG Rope Break on Twitter, Original Rope Break on Instagram, Twitch, and TikTok. And, of course, right here on YouTube, the home of the number one podcast in the YouTube wrestling community, The Original Rope Break. And you have one more thing that is left to say, and that is... Uh, uh, the...